Now, the global anti-racism protests sparked by the killing of George Floyd have put renewed focus on inequality. Black Lives Matter calls for systemic changes to empower people of colour. But there are still structures in place, like the caste system in India, which divides people into fixed social orders. And there's evidence that coronavirus is making those existing inequalities worse. The UN estimates that 258 million children are entirely excluded from education. Well, let's speak now to Suraj Yenge, who's one of only three academics from the Indian Dalit group, the lowest in the caste system, to get to Harvard University. He's now the co-convener of the Dalit Black Lives Matter Symposium. Thank you so much for being here with us on the programme. Let me start with exactly that final thought, because I assume that you see obvious parallels and echoes between the Dalit community and that whole uh, Black Lives Matter protest that we've been seeing. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for having me. Uh, the uh, relation of Dalit and black people uh, dates almost 130 year old. Uh, we've been uh, always in conversation, talking about each other, uh, looking at our, each other's back. And whenever the time came, uh, we also uh, stood in solidarity against our respective governments in order to show the global presence and, and to sort of recover ourselves from a very parochial, localized, imposed identities of caste or in this case, the racial system. Tell me more about those identities, because for those watching around the world not familiar with Dalits, how much discrimination do Dalits face in India? Every 18 minutes, one Dalit, known as former untouchables, undergo a mistreatment. Uh, they, are, they are facing uh, a brutal apathy and, and, and neglect, uh, but also they continue to uh, face the wrath of society that believes in the supremacist values of their caste based on their birth. So being an untouchable is to be on the margins of society. Uh, you don't have access to education as much. You are discouraged from even uh, pondering into new avenues. Entrepreneurial rate is less than 10% among the Dalit community. And Dalit community, if you look, uh, are across the religion uh, in, in, in India. And, and yet, uh, under the constitution, caste discrimination is illegal. Right back from 1950, did it feel that way for you growing up? Um, I would say no, because the idea of law existing in the constitution is not translated into the people's action. They have not embraced it totally. Also partly because the constitution was written by uh, one of the Dalits, Dr. Ambedkar. And, and there is always this uh, uh, difficulty among the dominant caste people to acknowledge uh, the principles and the values given in constitution. So uh, as much as the Indian government or any governments have tried uh, their best uh, to, uh, to address this issue, but this is a societal issue. And because it's a societal issue, the government becomes complicit. And in the last year alone, 47,000 yeah. were committed against Dalits. And we had that UNESCO report today talking about just the number of children excluded from education. And that affects, of course, so many uh, in the Dalit communities. In terms of your story, it's an incredible story. Uh, school, university, PhD, now a fellow at Harvard. How, how did you break through? Um, I, would, I would not say uh, this should be considered as a template of an exceptionalism. I mean, this, this, this is very rare, Matthew. Uh, it, had, it had taken... Uh, several generations to kind of hone and shape the way I am. Uh, but it is not the reality of the rest of the community. Having prefaced that, uh, it was always, I, my father was always part of uh, Dalit movements. And Dalit movements in India are educative movements. They believe in organizing around the idea of education and looking at the values of universal humanism. And I think through that, uh, I was kind of shaped. My father was a ex-Dalit Panther. And then obviously he kind of went and, 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 and started movements and participated in that. And I think that kind of global vision uh, shaped me and also made me think. In the schools in India, I was, I, was, I was discriminated against in my primary school, high school, and in university, I was, not, I was given the third rank when in fact I was, I was the first because my marks were decreased uh, arbitrarily by my professors. So that's when I thought I should leave this space which does not judge based on my merit and my hard work, but based on my caste. And that's why I went to overseas uh, to explore other possibilities and it, it, it paid off well. 
Well, it certainly has. Uh, an incredible personal story and uh, a renewed time to focus on all of these issues. Uh, Suraj, thank you so much for taking time and joining us here on BBC World News.